Remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. When life is a burden and everything is unstable, remember, just remember, Allah is the able. When nothing makes sense and you're heading for demise, remember, just remember, Allah is the wise. When the way is cloudy and there's no one by your side, Remember, just remember, Allah is the only guide. When your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall, remember, just remember, Allah sees it all. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, In the Names of Allah. In the previous segment of our program, we began to look at the misuse of Allah's names. We began the whole series by looking at a, an instruction which Allah gave with regards to His names. This instruction is found in the uh, chapter, the seventh chapter of the Quran, verse 118, which Allah says there, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ husna." فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا All the beautiful names belong to Allah. So call on Him with them, or call on Him by them, or through them. That's the basic theme of this whole series. How to call on Allah using His names. Calling on Him, of course, is worshipping Him. That's the essence of it, because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had said, الدُّعَا هُوَ الْعِبَادَ Calling on anyone is an act of worship. Right? So what Allah is asking us here to do is to worship Him through His names. Now, we looked at what was meant by it, according to the scholars, we said it meant to understand Allah's names, it meant to, to know them, to, uh, to act in accordance with them, to believe in them. I mean, this is all uh, included in the requirement to uh, worship Allah through His names. In the previous episode, as I said, we looked at a, a turn away from that, where people deviated from the correct path with regards to His names. There were those in the past who deduced the names of their idols from his names. The Quraysh worshipped Allah, taken from Allah. Also people deviated in the past and in the present by turning the names of Allah into numbers. By the abjad system. And from it, creating amulets and charms, etc., where these numbers are put into charts and the wearing of these amulets, ta'weed or hijab, people have different names from it, for it, uh, they use this as a means of bringing good for themselves or warding off evil. And of course, this is something unacceptable. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he found some of his companions or those who wanted to accept Islam, wearing uh, charms, he warned them. Those who were wearing it and wanted to accept Islam, he refused to accept their declaration of faith until they removed them. Those who were found wearing them, he warned them that they would uh, destroy their akhirah. So we know from the basis of uh, the Islamic teachings that Wearing of charms and amulets are not acceptable Islamically. The third group that we spoke about in the last uh, session were those who call on Allah using ways and turning His names into uh, sounds and repeating these sounds continually. Not dissimilar to that used by other non-Muslim uh, 
systems. There are other religions that have sounds that they repeat. They believe these sounds will cause certain things to take place. So people who take Allah's name, like Allah, and repeat it over and over again, Allah, 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 etc. You know, and they may go into trances, they may fall down, they may speak in tongues. A variety of things may happen to them as a result of this. But we should know that this is not from Islam. All of this is against the teachings of Islam. It represents innovation in the religion. It was not the way of Prophet Muhammad wasallam. He didn't do this. This is not how he remembered Allah. He taught us meaningful phrases, Subhanallah, Walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar. He taught us these phrases of praise, praise of Allah, or astaghfirullah, asking Allah's forgiveness. This is what he taught. And whenever he told his companions to, to remember Allah, repeat, repeating uh, his names, it will be in uh, meaningful phrases. And he didn't jump up and down, spin around, and do some of the things that people today do, claiming that they are remembering Allah. So, having understood these false ways, the next major area that we need to look at is the sources for the divine names of Allah. Because we already said that to derive names ourselves, this is... Uh, not acceptable. So where do we find the names from? Well, the sources, fundamental sources of the names must be from the Quran and the Sunnah. From revelation. Allah knows what his names were, are. What he taught Adam, he knows them. What he taught the messengers of Allah, he knows them. And that has to be the source for our knowledge of the names of Allah. This is the only reliable source. Anyone who claims a name from other sources is claiming that they know about Allah what even the messenger of Allah didn't know, what even his companions didn't know. And of course, any such claim has to be false. Now, the hadith we mentioned earlier, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, in which he said that Allah has 99 names, and whoever guards them will enter paradise. There are some narrations of this hadith in which the lists of Allah's names have been mentioned. They can be found in some of the books of hadith, Sunan al-Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, and Abi Dawood. However, the scholars of hadith, those who are experts in the science of hadith, they have identified these chains as all being inauthentic. Even though they are found in some of the books of hadith, the scholars, the experts, have identified them as being inauthentic. That in fact, these different lists of Allah's names were included inside of existing hadiths which were authentic. But all of the lists that we know of, even if we see them printed in the backs of the Quran, especially those printed in Asia, you'll find them, the whole list is there. Those are mainly taken from these hadiths, which are as such not authentic. And what you find when you actually look at these lists mentioned in the hadith, these inauthentic hadiths, is that they fail to include many of the established names of Allah, like Ar-Rabb, the Lord, Al-Khalaq, the Creator, Al-Qadir, the Able, Al-Qarib, the Near, while at the same time they include names which cannot be found in the Qur'an or in the Sunnah, like As-Sabur, which means the patient, Al-Muhsi, which means the reckoner, Al-Rashid, the discerning, and Al-Baqi, the eternal. These names cannot be found in the Qur'an and the authentic Sunnah. 
So those lists, as I mentioned, in spite of the fact that they are very popular, you can find them framed, people sell them, they produce them, they make them, and people buy them and put them in their homes. Uh, these lists are not authentic. And I should mention here that among the ways of misuse of Allah's names, since we're in the area of the uh, false lists of Allah's names, is for people to put the names in uh, frames, beautiful frames, and hang them on the wall, believing that the presence of this name on the wall is going to protect them from something. It's going to bring good for them. Or people wear them on pendants around their necks or on bracelets or they have them written on rings, etc. This, this practice is really not from Islam. Yes, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did have a ring in which it said Muhammadur Rasulullah. But that was a ring which he used to uh, stamp uh, letters which were sent out and it had a meaningful sentence. It wasn't, again, a single name of Allah. So we should also be aware of this practice which has become widespread. Now, the, so the basic principle we said here is that the names of Allah should be extracted from the Qur'an and the authentic sunnah. So what we're saying here, basically, is that the names of Allah may be determined by revelation only. So they're what is known as tawqifi. They're fixed. We cannot deduce names which don't already exist. And that makes sense because the human mind is not capable of knowing Allah beyond what Allah has revealed to him. The human mind has its limitations. And as such, if we were, leave, if we were to leave it to human reasoning and logic to determine what the names of Allah are, then we will end up with all kinds of uh, incorrect uh, terminologies as we can find in the world in many of the religions around the world today where people have given Allah a variety of different names, names of their own making, you know, which refer back to Allah's creatures, etc. So uh, we don't leave it to human reason and logic or emotion and experience to deduce the names of Allah. The names are those which he has revealed to us. So only if we have it by revelation, clear, uh, authentic revelation, then we accept those names which have come. And we don't deny them. We don't make up new ones and we accept what has been revealed. With that, we're going to take a break. And uh, inshallah, we will see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. Those who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, for those who want to enter the Jannah, the paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for the believers, and that's why we need to learn and we need to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us so that we submit ourselves to the orders of Allah. And this is knowledge that we need to learn. Why we're spending more time to look into the verses and to the meanings of the verses in depth so that we can get to learn from it what we need ourselves to be steadfast to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ponder over the meanings of the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong.
Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. Welcome back dear viewers as we continue to look at the sources for the divine names. We already established the basic principle that the divine names should only be extracted from authentic revelation either in the form of the Quran or in the form of the authentic narrations from the Sunnah. These are, these are our basic two sources. To take names from our reason, our logic, or from the expression of philosophers and others, this is not acceptable. In trying to uh, describe a law based on the names that are revealed, of course, the descriptions can exceed those which are specifically mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah. But the names, when it comes to the names themselves, these have to be limited to the Quran and the Sunnah. Now, there are, before we actually go in to look at the names of Allah themselves, 99 of them, inshallah, we will try to cover in our series uh, in the future. Before looking at them, there are some basic rules governing the understanding of the names. Because we said that on one hand we need to identify them. We have to identify the source from which to get them. We have to understand how to use them. And then we also had to understand how not to use them. So we have looked at all of that. Now we're going to look at issues concerning the understanding of the names themselves. Because if we're going to apply them, we must understand them. The first rule concerning the texts of the Qur'an and the Sunnah is that it has to be taken literally as a basic principle. We take the texts as they come. We don't go to interpretation, to metaphor, etc. until we have no other option. And there are supportive texts to justify shifting from the obvious meaning. And this principle, uh, we should understand this principle is a quite reasonable and logical principle. Because the Quran was revealed in Arabic. The Prophet, may God's peace and blessing be upon him, understood the Quran as it was revealed. And his companions understood it the same way. It is the norm for language that we take words on their face value. That words mean what they say. If we are to turn these words into symbolic or metaphoric meanings without any clear proof or evidence for justification, then the language becomes meaningless. It becomes a set of symbols which only a unique and special few may understand, or everybody is open to interpret things as they please. And if that's the case, then the essential meanings of the Qur'an would be lost. But if we follow the normal principle of language, that when somebody says to you something, you take it on face value, as it is said. If somebody says to you, for example, I have a car, or I have a house, we don't go to you know, some other meaning. We assume car means car, house means house. Now, this may be obvious in that usually people don't use the term car to mean anything else. Although we use car to refer to toys, you know, toy car. But when a person says, I have a car, we don't assume he means a toy car, not a real car. We assume he means a real car. 
If he says, I have a house, I have a house in Connecticut. We don't mean, think that we, he means, you know, he has a doll house. You know, as a kid, he had a doll house that he played with. And that's the house he has in Connecticut. We don't go there. We assume he says, I have a house in Connecticut. It means a real house. You assume he says, I have the car in Connecticut. It means a real car. It doesn't mean a toy. So that is the way language is. And that's the way that the names of Allah and his attributes should be taken. So when, for example, we find a verse in which Allah says, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ يُنْفِقُ كَيْفَ يَشَاء Instead, his two hands are spread out and he provides as he wishes. Some people say, well, hands, this is not appropriate. We don't want to say Allah has hands because that's making him like his creatures, etc., etc. So hands must mean something else. Uh, it must mean here maybe his generosity, you know. Uh, but we don't have the right to do that. Yes, Allah is generous. There's no doubt. But if he said his hands are spread out, we take it on face value. But we don't go into how his hands are. We don't go into the details. We don't try to understand it. Just as Allah says he is the ever-living, he's living. He's a living God. Now his life is not like our life. We understand life as we know it. And we believe God is living, but we don't claim to understand how he is living. Beyond what he has told us that, for example, his life is without beginning and without end. That is clear because he has informed us of that. But other than that, we don't go into how it is. You know, we leave it as it is. So similarly, uh, what we what we do with regards to all of Allah's names is we look at them in accordance with verse 11 of the 42nd chapter, Ashura, in which Allah says there, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Nothing is similar to him. Nothing is similar to him. So whatever he describes himself and however he describes himself, we don't try to make it similar to anything in his creation because to do so in fact is to then make him like his creation and if he is dissimilar to everything anything that we describe will have to be from what we have seen we have heard we have felt from what our senses perceive because we cannot describe anything that we have never seen touched smelled etc., or heard. How to describe a sound one has never heard? We can't. So, <clears throat> when we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we accept whatever descriptions He gives of Himself without changing the meanings, deviating from the basic meanings in the language. We accept when somebody says or speaks about the hands of the clock, that these hands are not like human hands. We have accepted that already. We're able to recognize these terms in other contexts as not being the same as the obvious meaning of the term. Similarly, we talk about the face of a mountain. But we don't perceive when we think of face of a mountain as having eyes, nose, and a mouth, etc. No. It means the side of the mountain. So, these terms exist in a language and we accept that when applied to different uh, creatures, it has different meanings. We talk about our legs, but now when we talk about the legs of a, an ant or the legs of an elephant, I mean, these are all quite different, but we're still using the same term leg. So, we, since we can, we can accept that within the creation itself, we may use similar terms, but they have different meanings when applied to different uh, creatures. Similarly, we should not have any problem in accepting that though a common term may be used between Allah and ourselves, what it means for us 
is not what it means for Allah at all. The second principle that uh, we need to understand with regards to uh, Allah's names and attributes is that all of Allah's names and attributes are transcendent. They are perfect. They are free from any kind of deficiency in any respect. As Allah said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَعُ husna." All the most beautiful names belong to Allah. So, we only give him those names which he has given himself. And if, for example, we find a text which seems to indicate the name of Allah, but there is in it some deficiency, then we have to know that this is not applicable to Allah. For example, the name Ad-Dahar, which means time. There is a hadith, a statement of the Prophet ﷺ, in which he said, لَا تَسُبُّ الدَّهَرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الدَّهَرْ What does that really mean? Does it mean that Allah is time? Time which Allah created, which has a beginning and has an end? Of course not. That's why to refer to Allah as الدَّهَرْ, that this would be one of his names, is not acceptable. What evidence do we have to go elsewhere? Well, there's a statement which is that of Allah. Prophet Muhammad quotes Allah as saying, "Biyadi al-amru uqallibu al-layl wa nahar The the affair is in my hand. I flip the night and the day. So, from that it's concluded that what is meant by the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu about Allah being time, meaning that He is the owner of time. It is in His control. He flips the day and the night. He changes it as he wills. So such a name is not applicable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that, dear viewers, we're going to close this segment and we will continue to look in our coming segment at the rules governing how to understand the names of Allah. And from there, we will begin to look at the names of Allah themselves. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you are weak and the road seems long, remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. When life is a burden and everything is unstable, remember, just remember, Allah is the able. When nothing makes sense and you're heading for demise, Remember, just remember, Allah is the wise. When the way is cloudy and there's no one by your side, remember, just remember, Allah is the only guide. When your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall, remember, just remember, Allah sees it all. When you are weak and the road seems Remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. When life is a burden and everything is unstable, remember, just remember, Allah is the able. When nothing makes sense and you're heading for demise, remember, just remember, Allah is the wise. When the way is cloudy and there's no one by your side, Remember, just remember, Allah is the only guide. When your heart is breaking and your pain makes you fall, remember, just remember, 